So, winning fights with shotguns. It's really all about hitting your shots, right? Yeah, that's true, but what's just as important as that, my friends, are really the cool tricks and techniques that you use to outplay your opponents. Bunch of crunch army. Yo, your motivation guy is back. If you could buff, nerf, or make any changes to the shotgun in game, like what would you change? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All right, guys, enough of this intro. You guys ready? Let's get this going. So in general, it's an excellent idea, guys, to play not only around your shotgun's effective range, but your opponents. Like the attack and the dragon shotguns have an effective range between point blank and one and a half tiles of distance, right? But with the charge, I mean, you can easily play two, three, or even more tiles away and still hit for crazy high numbers. Okay, so let's just say that you start a fight with the charge and you hear your opponent pull out attack. Since your charge can't shoot from, you know, further away before experiencing damage fall off, you should try to maintain a bit of distance to just play to that advantage. That would mean not jumping into their box, keeping them out of yours, and if you feel like they're getting too close, all you gotta do is just create a bit of distance just to tip the scales back into your favor. So one tip that I can give for my bunch of crunch army is for the dragon shotgun it is really not to underestimate its range, right? Like a lot of us think that you have to be directly on top of your opponent, but that's not really true after the buffs, like up to a tile or a tile and a half away. And this baby, man, it still hits hard, right? Which we're gonna show later in this video. So do not sleep on the dragon shotgun. It has better range than most of us can imagine. Overall, like you don't have to stay in your effective range all the time. Heck, I mean, really in most situations, like it's better to just get in there and just finish them off. But, you know, ideally, this is how you want to set yourself up so you can just maximize damage dealt while minimizing the amount received. And that's how you actually win games. I mean, we all know that. If you want to learn more about the small things that make huge differences, you got to talk with one of our coaches at ProGuys. These guys know Fortnite like it's written on the back of their hand. Like, I'm impressed, man. And they can really just guide you like with their knowledge, you know, the things that they know to really help you improve quickly. So to schedule a session, it is so easy. I'm so glad for that. Click the link up top or in the description below. Yo, like so many players make the crazy mistake of being overzealous in fights, okay? They'll make hasty edits where they don't even protect themselves first. And let me just say this, I can't judge anybody because I know how it is. I still do it sometimes, I can admit that. Especially, you know, when you're engaged, you know, somebody that's coming up on you, it's like, it's like it looks easy, right? It looks like you just take them out. But sometimes we play stupid, right? We get too overconfident. We do get too overzealous, right? And we do make like ridiculous edits and we don't protect ourselves first. And we'll just go all out and just try to force entry, you know, into someone's box. In those cases, it can actually be game changing to just hold the charge in your shotgun. Keep your crosshair placement steady and just wait for your opponent to peek, right? For instance, like we were watching the Peace Control Master replay some arenas and he did this all the time. Like he held his charge and he let his opponents be the ones that peek. He let them be the ones that made edits because of course he can just react and just shoot right away and just build something before they even pull out a weapon. And if they're smart players, the charging sound should be enough to make them play a little bit more cautiously, which is excellent when you're in a sticky situation, since it'll give you more time to, you know, you know, get some heals off and, and just come up with another strategy. Of course, you do not want to mold your entire playstyle around holding the charge. But in situations where you think an opponent might edit on you, let that shotgun hiss a little bit and it's going to scare them off. And if they're too cocky, you'll just end up hitting a meaty shot anyway. But overall, guys, man, as your motivation guy, man, I want you guys to stay motivated and stay confident because as soon as you lose your confidence, guys, guess what? You lose your motivation. Like, think about it. Every time you lose your motivation, it's honestly because you lost your confidence. So confidence comes, man, by just applying what we're teaching you, you know, really applying it, you know, practicing, getting in creative, you know, um, playing against other people that, you know, um, have an advantage over you, you know, purposely to learn from them and to play with other people, other teammates that, you know, you work good with, right? Um, that you guys have really good team chemistry because all that matters. So keep your confidence up. And as you stay confident, you're going to stay motivated. All right, next up. 
If you want to dominate shotgun fights, especially with a charge, all right, you need to utilize cover and right hand peaks in as many instances as possible. This applies, right, to both offensive and defensive scenarios. Like, and when it comes to it, having proper cover, it's going to make or break your game. So an absolutely stable technique is attacking walls from the left side. That way, if you take it, you'll be set up for a right hand peek after editing. Or if your opponent edits on you first, you're going to be in a spot where you can just simply build a wall and get behind cover. So take this example from Clicks. Even though he's just toying with his opponent, his approach is very solid. He plays to his charge's effective range. He cones his opponent's box and then he gets behind cover on the left when things get hairy. But that jump shot position, whoo, man, yo, that works. It, it is so powerful. His opponent probably had no time to react. Nice kill as usual by my boy Clicks. All right, you guys got to check out his master course if you haven't already. We're so excited about that. Anyways, all right, that should be your approach on the offensive end. But when you're on defense and running isn't an option, you have a few ways to build cover and create a right hand peek inside your box. All right, for one, the cone peak is still pretty strong, right? You place a metal cone in your box. You crouch behind it, and now you can stand, shoot, and crouch again. It's sort of like a head glitch spot where your opponent won't see you clearly, so they're just going to be forced to enter your box where you're going to have an angle advantage. You can also edit the left corner of your cone and play behind the part, you know, that rises up. This creates a right hand peek for you, which should also help you land your shots first. So another edit, guys, that you can use is the left side ramp. It's sort of like you're doing a mongrel classic in your own box, but the whole point is really to use that piece of your ramp as cover so that you have a right side just to peek into. But other than those, if, if there's one edit technique that you should always be trying to perfect, it's the top right edit. This one still so extremely potent when you know combo with the jump shot and especially when using the charts definitely guys practice this jump shot until you're sick of it because if you can get this down whoo you're gonna be landing some really big shots man so now two things the tax shotgun has really going for it over you know over other shotguns are its ammo count and structure damage and that's why you should use it more often to just pressure your opponent's builds. So we talked a bit about how to effectively use tax this way in our last video, but just to kind of, you know, elaborate on it, the high rarity tax, AKA purple and gold, uh, deal, they deal 75 plus damage per shots to builds, the same as an initial pickaxe wing. And since you don't have to reload often, they're perfect for applying pressure when you're trying to replace walls. Pros renowned for their fighting abilities utilize the tack this way all the time, right? It's just really advantageous for you. Sure, your pickaxe can just technically deal more damage, but so many players go for quick edits when they see your pickaxe, so in a lot of cases, it's not really the correct play. Instead, this is what you gotta do. If you pressure and take walls with your tack, you're gonna be ready to shoot as soon as they edit on you. And that's more important in the long run, even if you're tearing through walls at a slower pace. So moving on, my friends, right, you know, many of us have this instinct way to always aim our crosshair dot directly on our opponent's head. But surprisingly, with shotguns, you don't always hit for max damage when aiming for the head. Yeah, newsflash. For instance, what the tack where you should aim depends on what distance you are from your opponent. If you're right on top of them, yeah, I mean, yeah, aim for the head. That's true for all shotguns, but one tile away and you need to really make sure that your crosshair dot is more on the center of their head, aim right on the tip of their head and some pellets will miss. And for more than one tile away, it's actually better to aim for the neck than the head, actually. Yeah, you, you heard me just say that, like, aiming for the neck at that distance actually increases your damage by a considerable amount. So the dragon shotgun is a little bit different. That gun doesn't really have a good headshot multiplier, so unless you're pretty much just touching your opponent, it's typically better to aim for the stomach. Even one tile away, the dragon shotgun does incredible damage as long as you can hit every pellet. And the only way for that to happen is if you aim for the stomach. It sounds kind of counterintuitive. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, I get it. But it actually works. And contrary to the other two, the charge's pellet spread is so tight, like you pretty much want to aim directly at your opponent's head in every situation, no matter the range. So, in summary, always aim for the head with the charge, guys. Aim for the neck with the tack, and for the stomach with the dragon shotgun, unless you're in extreme close quarters, in which case, hey, you gotta aim for the head. All right, this next tip, my friends, bunch of crunch on me. I hope you guys are still there. I hope you guys are enjoying this video because I'm telling you, man, look, this season is your season. You got to own it. And the fact that you're listening right now shows me that you're very serious about this. So keep going. I want to share this next tip. This next tip is one of the better weapon combos this season, the charge shotgun and RPG. 
And I'm sure you guys have seen the old shotgun RPG combo, where you send a rocket at an opponent's box and fire your shotgun the second it blows up to sneak in a shot. It's one of those older tricks in the book, I get it, but we haven't seen it for a long time because the RPG was effectively vaulted for the last two seasons. However, now that you can actually get an RPG from either Ruckus at Hydro 16 or from Splode at the Unremarkable Shack, this combo is back, baby. And it's returned stronger than ever because of the charge. So you could do the same strategy people did with the pump, but now just charge up your shot as your rocket flies in and just hit even harder than you ever would with attack or even a pump. Trust me, if you're ever lucky to get both a charge and an RPG in the same game, you definitely gotta consider carrying them both. And you know, this combo is gonna deal some crazy damage. All right, so now everyone loves a gimmicky way to get kills, right? And since the charge is back and there is the new Dragon Shotgun, using shockwaves and bouncers to dive bomb into opponents has become so incredibly powerful. Way more powerful than last season, and it's the ultimate gimmicky way to rack up kills this season. I mean, think about this, guys. Like, the charge mechanic, along with shockwaves or even bouncers, is a match made in heaven. Like, while launching yourself toward an enemy, you get to charge your shotgun midair, and when you get close, you can just unleash an extremely hard hit. Same deal with the dragon shotgun. With that weapon, your success isn't about hitting precise headshots or anything like that. It's more about closing the gap, right? Like, getting right on top of the enemy and just going for a body shot that can net you at least three quarters of their health. So, both the charge and dragon benefit so much from shockwave dive bombs. And not to mention how bugged shockwaves still are. Like, you usually can't even hear when someone is dive bombing since, you know, it really makes no noise. So until they fix that, you should definitely be carrying shockwaves and abusing them to your advantage. Now, after the buffs, the dragon shotgun became pretty deadly. It does some of the most ridiculous burst damage in the game. So much to the point where it's rarely worth trading shots against if you don't have one too. But it suffers from one big downfall though. The fact that you can only get one shot before needing to reload, oof. So when playing against a dragon shotgun, you should always try to block your opponent's shot. And make sure you build with brick or metal so your builds do not catch on fire. For instance, this can mean pretending to peek, but instead of actually peeking, so you just place a build so they shoot at. Or you can perform a wall edit where you expose yourself for half a second, but quickly reset to bait out the shot. So whatever your method, as long as you can block your opponent's initial shot, you've instantly gained a massive advantage in the fight. That is, as long as you can just follow through. And by that, I mean never let your opponent with the dragon shotgun reload, guys. This means you should spam their builds. I mean, get in their face, pressure them, do whatever you gotta do, please. <laughs> it's just that the dragon shotgun is just so OP that you have to do this, but at the end of the day, man, it's a shotgun. And if you can effectively make your opponent's shotgun useless, hey, you pretty much just won the fight. Lastly, this isn't really like a fighting tip, but availability is one of the worst things plaguing the charge and dragon shotguns. They're almost impossible to find. And it feels like for every 15 tag shotguns, you might see one of the others. I'm not sure if this is like Epic's way of balancing, but right now, there aren't really too many ways to get the new shotguns. The only somewhat consistent method is through NPCs. So for the dragon shotgun, one NPC is Blaze, who spawns at either Pristine Point by Steamy or at the wooden log tent south of Sweaty. She's your best choice since you really can just beat her in a duel really easily just to get her shotgun, but you gotta be warned about this. She's relatively well contested by other players, so if you find that to be the case, you might be better off just landing close to one of her spawns, then rotating in and just cleaning up the other players that landed on her. The other option is to buy one from Condor in Misty Meadows. The price is typically between one and 200 gold bars, so that's really not too bad. As far as the charge shotgun, hmm. I don't think there's an NPC that sells them 100% of the time. The only one that I can think of that sells shotguns in general is Bandolier. But the good news is that he can actually sell gold tax or charge shotguns, so he's worth hitting up if you're in the area. Again, it kind of sucks when we can't do most of these NPC interactions in competitive. Do you guys feel that way? I mean, I really do, but hopefully Epic works something out and we can just soon start using these NPCs more in Arena. Anyways, my friends, that is it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed the tips and really found them helpful. Leave a like if you can, you know, sub, you know, for more videos. And don't forget to leave a comment. You know, what would you like to change about shotguns? Hey, have an awesome day. Bunch of crunch on me. I'll see you soon.